Hey everybody, this is Matt. How are you guys doing? This is going to be another Native Instruments Massive tutorial. It's going to be a little bit different this time though. I'm going to eventually get to the patch that I used for the Threshold of Insanity track. That's the drum and bass track that I released earlier this week. But before I do that, it's necessary for me to go over the steps of how I was able to actually use Massive with Reason. Because Reason is kind of a strange animal in that it doesn't allow for VST instruments to be used on this platform like other DAWs do. Instead, it requires all instruments to be directly loaded in the form of uh, rack extensions or something that is programmed as specifically for reason. It's kind of like um, Apple iPhones in that they allow for third-party developers to make programs for iPhones, but they, ha they, they go through strict requirements and they have a specific API that they need to follow. And it's kind of like the same way here. Um, so we have to develop a workaround to be able to use Massive with Propeller Head Reason. And um, I'm going to prove to you that I'm actually doing this. And this is actually the instrument that I'm using. And it's got the patch that I'm using. Uh, I used for a threshold of insanity. And then we're going to go over here and we are going to go into the uh, MIDI editor and play a note. Okay, so that basically proves that I'm using Massive with Propeller and Reason. Okay, so there are a couple of requirements to be able to do this. One is that you need two different sound card uh, drivers. Uh, and uh, videos that I've watched doing this, they, they figure that you can actually use like the different uh, drivers on the same sound card. And I'm not exactly sure that that is true. But um, I, I actually have used two sound cards to make this work. I have a Line 6 Pod HD 500 guitar effects processor that also doubles as a sound card. And this is one of my admissions here. I actually compose some of my music on this uh, when I don't feel like using uh, my other sound card, which is a Roland Cakewalk UA dash 25 ex uh, input peripheral and that is also a sound card so basically the massive uh, instrument here feeds its sound and its midi uh, input or uh, input into the uh, pod uh, hd 500 and the signals then get routed to the propeller reason through the ua 25 and the way this is done is a little program called Loop B1. And Loop B1 is basically the best way I can describe it is a virtual wire that connects the two together, the two drivers together. And if you want to bypass the drivers, it's basically it's the wire that connects massive to reason here. And the way you get Loop B1 is through this website right here. It's www.nerds.de and I'm on the English site here. I basically, I did a Google search for this and it brought me to this site right here. And um, in order to get the program, you have to basically contact them and order it. Uh, you pay them a little bit of money. Um, in this case, Loop B1 costs about $13.90 US and 11.9 euros. Um, and that's a pretty cheap. It was worth it for what it does. And so basically we get that program, we install it. And then once it is installed, it's one of these automatic programs that automatically load up when you start your computer. It doesn't take any memory whatsoever and it doesn't mess up your computer whatsoever either. Okay, so once we've got that installed and running, we go to our massive instruments and we go to file, audio and MIDI settings. And as you can see, my ASIO configuration goes to the pod HD 500 driver. And then that is correctly, that's where the sound goes. And then our MIDI is actually routed to loop B1 internal MIDI and we turn that from off to on to be able to use it and then everything else is off. And that's, that's it's as simple as that. That's how you route that piece of uh, uh, um, uh, programming uh, to be able to do this. 
Okay, so the second thing that you do is you go into your propeller and reason and you hit edit, then preferences. And as you can see, my audio says, uh, set, settings are here. Um, and my audio car driver is ASIO UA 25EX. That is the sound that I'm using to basically play sound through propeller head reason and basically mix down my audio as well. And then the other thing you have to route, of course, is the MIDI, which you do through the sync tab. And as you can see, we go down to the output here of the MIDI clock sync and you route it to loop B1 internal MIDI, which is the same thing that Massive routes to in its settings right here. And it's pretty much that, uh, that simple. Once you get that routed though, then you have to be able to play it. And you do that through the instruments and then external, external MIDI instrument. Once you get that instrument uh, up and running, you basically select the uh, loop B1 internal, internal MIDI and that takes care of that. I'm going to basically delete this one now because I already have this external MIDI instrument up and as you can see the MME loop B internal MIDI is already connected and that's how I I'm able to play these sounds now. Okay, so that's pretty simple, but then there's one more step that you need to do. Uh, right now, with this setup, you can actually play the sounds, but you can't you can't make it in a, interact with anything else on this program. You can hear the you can hear the sounds, but Reason doesn't know uh, Reason doesn't know how to handle the sounds. And so, what we need to do once you've got the notes that you program with the MIDI instrument. You need to be able to record it and then you can interact with that recording through the effects. And the way we do that is we get right click and we go into utilities and we select an audio track. Okay. <laughs> and I'm echoing right here. So let's actually turn like, the echo off real quick. All right. So what we want to do here is we want to select UA25 stereo input right here. We go into our, our MIDI interface right here and we solo this out uh, in case you have any other instruments in the mix. You want to solo this out and then you, un you basically record the track hitting the record button here. You go record. Okay, that's enough going to shift the echo out and then as you can see I'm going to mute the MIDI track that plays massive and now we have a recording of what we just played okay sweet all right so uh, a couple things to notice here um, I know I did a half-assed job of uh, of doing uh, this uh, note right here I basically I programmed it without actually like zooming in and stuff like that but one of the things to note when you do this recording is that you most likely will end up with a little bit of latency between massive and the recording that you get so all you have to do with that is basically move that track in to the starting point of the track and then basically bring that to where you want it Okay, and that's how you get the sound onto Reason. And when you get that, you can actually go into the audio track here in the Rack Effects menu, and you can hit the Show Insert Effects here and interact with your recording, basically the same way you were, uh, interact with any other recording with compressors and equalizers and um, stuff like that. And so that's the that's the tutorial. Uh, let me know uh, how you guys actually found this tutorial was it informative and i will see you with the base patch um with uh, threshold of insanity all right thank you guys bye